Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Banshee's Whale. Thanks for joining us. And this is our Halloween special. Ooh. So I will be your dungeon master for tonight to tell the story that happens in the town of Langston and the horrors that our party will witness. But let's start off with some introductions of our players. Nail. Y'all, yeah, my name is Nail, and I came to, to crash things. And then we have Brody. Oh, hey guys. How you doing? It's me. I'm Brody. And we're gonna chill out. And then Dracon. I am Dracon. And things are about to get shocking. And then Craden. I'm Craden. And I'm much better looking than the rest of them. All right. Well, let us start off the story. The four of you are a traveling group of dragonborn mercenaries doing contracts spelling out your name amongst the land you have been hired by a noble for protection and to deal with a nuisance of sort in the letter that was sent for your request he explains that the town of langston has been haunted by some sort of creature appearing every few nights to terrorize the small town. The man who sent the request is the lord of the land, Lord Tyron. He explains that your primary job will be his protection to ensure that nothing happens to him or his family or their estate. You will also be tasked with dealing with the creature if it arises, but his safety is above all. It wasn't a long travel, it took about eight days traveling by multiple means, you've arrived at the town of Langston. It is the changing of the season from fall to winter. The harvest is coming just before the cold, but it has started to arrive. The air is crisp. Clouds have rolled in. You've all heard of the town of Langston before. It had been going through quite a drought for a while through the year and was having financial troubles. But as of recent, things have turned around for them. They've had bountiful harvest thus far in recent times, plenty of rain to soak their lands. They seem to have had very good fortune as of late. So after your travels, you have arrived at the town of Langston. Down at the bottom, you will find your characters. Today, like mentioned, it's Crisp air, little nippy for some of you. Clouds covering the sky, a nice gray shadowing over the land. Might expect a little bit of rain. As you approach, you see that the road winds up the side of a mountain in which the town is built onto. As you get closer, you did see that the mountain has a plateau at the top, and as Looking from a distance, you could see people moving about. You've walked up, and you see a gate closed, blocking the road ahead. What do you all wish to do? We we'll probably should go find this Lord Tyrant guy, right? So I'll start walking into town. I'm going to well, walk up to the gate and knock. Real hard. <laughs> so just walking up to the gate and with one fist, knocking on it yep. aggressively? Yes. All right. Dracon walks up to the gate, a uh, setup of wood and metal, bangs against it. You see over the top corner of the gate, a young man walks on the wall above you and looks down. What do you all want? We've been summoned by Lord Tyron. Let us in. Oh, perfect. He said that he would be arriving soon. The young man disappears from your sight for a moment. The gate opens up to you. Yes, he said he was sending for help to deal with the, the creature that's been attacking us at night. We are that help. Perfect. My name is Luca. I'm a member of the guard here. Hello, Luca. I am Dracon. Ah, pleasure. And he puts his hand out toward you. Shake his hand. Now, firm grip you've got there. 
If you guys need anything, please let me know. I'm always happy to help out. If you follow the road up the mountain, uh, you'll find a, a larger establishment. That's where you can find Lord Tyron. All right. Thank you, Luca. Let's follow the puny man thing. Oh, I have to stay and watch the gate. But if you just follow the road straight up, you, you can't miss it. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah, if you get lost at all, there's guards stationed around the town. You could always just ask them to point you in the way. So this is the way. This is the, the way. Graydon, Brody, are you going to follow? Yep. As you enter, Luca closes the gate. I give nod to these folks as I hike up the road further and cross this bridge. They all give you a glance. As you walk through, you notice children playing merrily. Uh, a lot of the townsfolk getting uh, different produce ready, packaging up. Everybody seems very happy, cheerful. How happy and cheerful, though? Like North Quite. Korea happy and cheerful, or... <laughs> uh, <laughs> farmers really? right after really? a very good harvest cheerful <laughs> supreme leader will provide everything damn nail you hit it on the head isn't Nail russian he's awesome he is a dragon kin perfect give it that way <laughs> <laughs> right. you, you walk through, uh, you see some farmers attending to, to some boxes. Uh, you pass by a woman uh, dragging a barrel, uh, struggling a little bit, but dragging a barrel. Looks like everybody's working really hard. Uh, you follow the road up. You see a very regal man, uh, very tan skin, long black hair, uh, dressed very nicely. Uh, talking to a man suited in armor, uh, standing with very good stature. Uh, they're having a conversation as you approach. Uh, you walk up to them. The conversation stops, and he turns around. Ah, you must be those that I sent for. We are, and I give him a bow. Perfect. I'm Lord Tyron, but you can call me Roland if you'd like. Uh, may I ask all of your names, since we'll be working together here? Roland, I am Dracon. You can call me Creighton. They call me Brody. My friends call me Nail, but so do strangers, so you can call me Nail. Hopefully you regard me as friend, then. And this is Captain Williams. He is the leader of the guard here. He gives a nod over to you all. Give him a nod back. Lord Tyron turns from you and begins to walk over to the large, large estate. This is where I will be for the days that you are here. This is my estate. My lovely daughter is in there. You all will be staying in my guest home, directly next to it. He points over at this establishment. Accommodations have been set up for all of you. Hopefully you deal with this problem quickly. Captain William turns toward Lord Tyron. So I will be off. Uh, I must deal with a few things to get ready for the nights. Hopefully we don't see the beast soon. Yes, Captain Williams. Be safe. Captain William follows the road down. Nah, the man works diligently, we'll say. We will gather our strength so that we may attend to this matter. Yes. Thank you for your hospitality, sir. Do any of you have questions of the town, any, the job while you're here, anything in particular? Yeah, what exactly, you know, are we doing? Like, what, what's going on here that you needed, you know, four ferocious dragonborns? Ah. Yes. He, he looks around. I'm worried for my safety. There's a creature that's been attacking the town. Of course, worried about everyone else's safety as well, so that's why you're all here. 
uh, not only to protect myself, but the people. It's been attacking every few nights, so on. Uh, it's a, a specter of sorts, riding atop a flaming horse. It hasn't caused too much trouble until recent. It, at first, it was just riding through town, scaring the folks. So we all started staying inside at night. Uh, issued out a curfew for everybody. And then it started getting a bit aggressive. One of my guards approached it and sad he lost his life so that's when was i he... issued out the contract to you all was he strong ah uh, he was a, a burly man he bid trouble with in an arm wrestle but i'm sure nothing compared to you now ah he's only a man let's go and do this who are we killing yeah does he have any patterns or anything what's his motive uh, he doesn't speak. He has the body of a man. Um, but any any type of tr uh, conversation with it seems unsuccessful. Uh, it First, like I said, it just rode through town. Uh, didn't get aggressive until recent. Did anybody do anything to provoke the creature? Uh... Not after we all just started staying in, indoors at night. But then one guard, like I said, tried to approach it. Uh, just actually a little more than a week ago. Uh, and he was cut down by the creature. Cut down how? Uh, with a sword. Uh, it seems to be wielding a spectral blade of swords. So... You're all afraid of just, like, some dude with a sword? I did it. Uh, my pardon if I forgot to mention. Uh, he was riding atop a flaming horse uh, very quickly. Uh, nobody really wanted to get run down by it. How big um, is the sword? <laughs> it's a pretty long sword now. Okay. Big shield. Probably pretty effective. Any other questions? It has been a few days since it attacked, so I am worried it's going to come back soon. Do you have any idea where the beast hangs out, sleeps, eats, anything like that? Any useful information for us? The creature seems to just appear in front of the town uh, at the base, and then it runs up the road. Uh, at the end of the night, it just disappears. Sounds to me like you're all just running from some kind of a ghost story, but if there's gold in it, we'll take care of it for you. Perfect. Like I said, if you can deal with it, uh, the bounty for the contracts, uh, each of you right now, actually, he pulls out uh, a coin purse and gives each of you 100 gold. It's just the upfront cost for you all to be here uh there will be 500 more for each of you upon completion okay okay easiest like gold i ever made nail came yeah. here to kill things point me to where yeah. i need to go perfect if you all wish to rest in the guest house until the night uh, and then you can patrol around the town i'm hoping it actually appears tonight so you all can deal with it Thanks. Yeah, the, so the sooner the better, for sure. Yeah, the quicker you can earn your golds, right? Exactly. He gives a grin. Nail will go night-night. Ah, I like that idea. Be rested for the battle. And Creighton, while, while I have you here, you do seem most cognizant of what I've been going over. Um, like I, I did mention... I am worried about myself and my family, so please try and give some extra attention to, to make sure it doesn't harm me or my daughter. Yeah, I mean, if it's, you know, all the same to you, I'll just, I'll camp out outside of your door, front door, just kind of hang out there for the night. Just need a good rocking chair, and I'll be on alert. Ah, I'll, I'll have Dretch uh, fasten you up one. Uh, it'll be comfortable, I promise. 
Perfect. And if I could make one more request of you. For, for as much as you're paying me, you can make any request. Perfect. A man who truly understands the weight of gold. He walks down past you. Here. And he points down in this direction toward the woman uh, working with the barrels down by the river. If you could watch out for Gail as well. The beauty oh, she Gail, is. Gail, someone special to you, eh, buddy? Now she's caught my eye. But she is to another. But I still wish them to be safe. You got it, man. She's on my list. Perfect. As he hands you five more gold. Uh, tip, my, tip my hat to him. And then wink. It's like, I get it. I get it. All right. Well, a good rest to you. I hope to see you in the morning. You as well. And he goes and enters into his estate. And then I'll sit right out here and hang out for the night. All right. It's about midday. Is there the anything afternoon. else you would all like to do? Oh, while, while we're here, do they have an armory? <clears throat> gold to spend? Uh, the idea pops into your mind, and you see just across the way, uh, there is a forge and anvil with a dwarf, brawny, long, blonde beard, uh, hammering away at a, a sword. Normal dwarf. Do you think you could make a... Uh... Make me a some some you know metal armor. The studded stuff I have is starting to get a little worn. Uh, is that a challenge? I hear. Yeah. He turns yeah, toward I... you, hammer risen. What do you need? I need some armor, but it's got to fit me. I'm bigger than I'm sure most of your clientele. Ah, eh, scrawny you are. It'll fit. What kind? It'll fit the... I mean, you got any, any, uh, anything in like, like a breastplate? I think a breastplate would work. I can do that. What do you think? If for such a challenge, 20 gold? He squints his eyes toward you. 24. You drive a hard bargain, sir, but it's yours. All right. Give me three hours. Done. I'll be over there by the... Lord's house. And I'll drop him. I'll drop him the gold ahead of time. And he takes it and then walks over and begins to, to work as Brody and Dracon stare at your conversation. Weird creepers just always watching everything I do. My good man, do you have anything in your possession of a magical nature? Sword. Any weapon, perhaps a shield of sorts? I can fasten you a normal shield. I'm not near my... Uh, a good dwarven forge, I could. But with what I have here, normal is what you're getting. Well, hmm. Any pole arms on your person? Halberd or glaive, perhaps? I have a halberd in, in the homestead. Let's take one of those. All right. You go fetch it. See, walks into his home. He comes back out, holding it in both hands, uh, turning slightly to get it to fix, fit through the door to walk out. That'll cost gold. you 20 gold. It is a deal. And I give him 20 gold. And that will conclude my business with him. I'll give him a little nod, and I will go wait in front of Lord Tywin's house. Have a good day to you as well. Give him a wave. Spits on the ground. And you, pale one. Oh, uh, yeah. Let me see. Uh... Don't really need anything from you. Now that I'm looking. He took too long. What about you? Nail needs a shield. Yeah. So short. See, 
A man that knows what he wants. Be ten gold. Nail gives him ten gold. And I give Nail a shield. As he hands you a shield, saying it out loud. Nail thanks you. Drush says you're welcome. Yay, shield. It's a good dwarf. You got any more of them shields? Yes. Perfect. He goes into his home, comes out with one. Same for ye. Ten, ten gold. Ten gold pieces? Done. I'll work on your breastplate now. Perfect. I'll be back uh, probably late tonight before you close. So the evening then. Some, something like that. Time on land is always so much different. All right. You guys want to do anything else in the town? I'm good. Um, uh, you know, I'm going to spend a little bit of time. I'm going to talk to this farmer over here. Just kind of hanging out by his hut. You see him uh, chopping some wood. Hey. What can you tell me about this, uh ghost, you know, in parentheses, ghost that's been terrorizing the town. And it's quite terrifying. Have you seen it yourself? Just glimpses at it. Not too and, good of a uh, look. The thing itself is on fire. It's a little hard to to get without getting close to it. And when you see it, what, what does it look like to you? Well... It's a man riding a flaming horse, from all I can see. Again, I've only really looked at it from afar. See. Well, I wouldn't worry I mean, about it too much longer. Oh, you're here to deal with it? Yeah, we're, we'll, we'll take care of it for you guys. Uh, please do. And try not to be too afraid of it, though. I mean, if a random creature riding a flaming horse were to burst through your town gates, I'm sure that would freak anyone out, right? Sir, I've fought krakens. I've dealt with things that would probably scare you at this point, so I'm, I'm good. I don't think a ghost is going to scare me much, if it even is a ghost. I, I appreciate it, brave one. Will you be needing anything? Anything I can do? Um, really, I'm just trying to find some information on it. It sounds, everything kind of sounds vague. So, well, it you know kind of had a appeared and, hmm. I know at first when it arrived, it ran through the bottom portion of town in a circle for a while. Maybe somebody there got a good look of it, look at it. Uh, okay. I will check there. I do appreciate the information. And again, don't worry about it. Me and my, you know, buddies here, we'll take care of it for you. Not much gets past Dragonborn. Perfect. I really appreciate it. I'll just saunter away. He grabs a log and loads it back up onto the stump to chop another one. I'm just going to go and, uh, I'm not going to go talk to anybody, but I'm just going to go, uh, Keep a watchful eye over Gail. Bro, buddy system. You see her dragging more more barrels into the sort of um, smaller establishment. Uh, she seems to be struggling a bit. I don't understand what these scaleless ones see in each other, but maybe I'll go help her. And I'll approach cautiously. She notices you and turns towards you, uh, surprised when she sees you, uh, then calms down. I, I do apologize for my appearance, miss. We are a fearsome race. Is there anything that you would need assistance with today? I find myself with some free time. She apologizes for her surprise. They don't see many of your kind in the area. Uh, she d hasn't seen any of your kind at all. You're the first. Um, she assumes that you are here to help with the creature. Yes, we are here to defeat this creature. What do you know of it? Have you seen it yourself? 
She looks down, lets out a sigh. She explains that nobody takes it serious when she tells them, but it it's odd. The the man that rides atop the horse is missing his head. See that that is good information. That's interesting. So it's not a man, but some sort of headless creature. She thanks you and says that she knew that had to mean something on why it was here. Now, is there any ever any history of this happening before? She tells you no, not that she's aware of, and she's she was raised in this town. Now, she's a younger woman, uh, younger side, about mid-twenties. Might you guys have, like, a village elder or shaman that may, you know, know the stories or history of your people? Uh, she explains not too many. Uh, some older folk, uh, the captain of the guard uh, is in his 60s. He's a little older, so he might know of something. Um, and she, her eyes open wide, and she's like, uh, she rushes toward you and grabs your hands. And one more thing. She explains that she has a request. Uh, if you see a man while you're traveling around, um, brown hair, taller, a young man, her age, his name is Joseph. Um, he, he went missing a, a while ago. It would this be the man that you are promised to? She says, yes, her fiance. Let's she just had say... Give, she's given up, she had given up hope that he he's still alive wherever he he is. He went hunting over a month ago and had, did not return. He's been missing that long, you say. Would you say that his disappearance coincided with the appearance of this headless man? She says no. Uh, there was uh, a couple weeks before its appearance. Interesting. Well, let's just say I've been tasked with watching over you and uh, this Joseph, so finding him is a priority of mine. She so, She's a little surprised watching over her? What do you mean? Let's just say that you're cared for in this town. I can't really give any more information beyond that. She sighs and says, you've explained plenty um, already, but she thanks you. If you need anything from me or have more information, uh, we're staying near uh, Lord Terran's house, so you can find me there. She seems a little retreated, but nods at you and thanks you again. I'll give her a slight nod, bow, and then walk away. A knowing nod. Exactly. <laughs> Nail, what are you doing, buddy? I don't know. Nail wants to go to sleep, but nobody is going to sleep. Well, yeah, it's like one o'clock in the afternoon. We yeah, have night job. I don't think I could sleep if I tried. Wait, I just realized, what are you doing, Dracon? I am uh, asking these guards. Um, gentlemen, how long have uh, has your town been dealing with this uh, issue of the specter? They look at each other and look at you. The one on the on your right responds, uh, just a couple weeks now. This creature could be a restless soul. Has there been any strange happenings in the last few weeks? Any deaths under strange circumstances? Any, any hearings of the supernatural you may have gotten passing? No, nothing of that sort. Actually, the town has had has seen uh, great luck of sort. The, the rain has shined upon us. We're ever grateful, but nothing unfortunate other than this creature. Everything seems t to have been going great until it arrived. Hmm. Now I find it unlikely, but I must ask nonetheless. Has the creature ever left? 
any sort of evidence upon its visits, whether that is uh, an item or some kind of imprint, tracks, markings, anything like that? Tracks, yes. After it leaves, uh, we see scorched hoof prints in the ground. But by the next day, they're gone. Thank you both for your time. And I give them two gold pieces each. Thank you. And I report back to my comrade. We may just have to wait until this damn thing comes. Not many people seem to know what the hell is going on. Yeah, it's, everything I've gotten is pretty vague. The most detailed information I have is that it seems that he's headless, which makes me think it's some kind of apparition or maybe shapeshifted beast. Yeah, he seems to scorch the earth beneath feet of its steed. It's definitely not of this world. Let's gather our energy and get ready to attack it head on. And I'm going to go ahead and post up in front of Lord Tyrant's house. All right. The rest of you? I'm just waiting for my uh, armor to be done at this point. Okay. Then you wait around. Enough time passes. Dretch walks over to the wall and yells at you. Got your armor ready. Small one. Listen, listen. I may be smaller than the other dragonborn, but I'm bigger than anyone else here. Small one, let's come out, get the armor. Out a, a, a loud laugh. Uh, depends what we're measuring. But here you go. Uh, I'll try it on. Give it a few taps to make sure it's, it sounds sturdy. It fits very, very well, very snug. Uh, you can tell the material is pretty mediocre, but made very well. I feel like you could do well in some of the port towns, good sir. Ah, I've traveled. It's nice to have a relaxing time for a while, you know? The land has not quite caught my attention yet. Yeah, up until recent, it's been nice. Not much goes on. Well, maybe once I get as old as you, if death hasn't taken me, I'll join you in your retirement. Yeah, to old age. As he turns. I'll, I'll tip him an extra two gold and then walk away. He nods at you. Thank you. Averagely sized one. <laughs> Noble dwarf, good sir. <clears throat> and he walks into his home. You see, as he does that, he turns his sign and says uh, to say closed. That is now uh, in the evening. Uh, you can see the sun just hovering over the horizon. What time did did the man say that the headless thing comes? Does anyone I remember? I, I don't. I don't think they said an exact time. I think we just said in the night. Well, it's night. Hmm. He's not going to show up. He's too scared. Yes, Nails, but there's plenty of night left to be had. It has only begun. Before the sun touches the horizon, you do see all of the town folk begin to enter into their homes. They're all so scared. We shall keep you safe. Don't worry. And Nail starts slamming his scimitar into his shield. Come on! Let's keep them safe. Nails, I think you would scare away anything. True. Nail thanks you for compliment. Oh, look! Puny man, people. Ignore that one, son. It is the door, door boy and the captain. Nah, I see you've been acquainted with my son, Luca. Hopefully you didn't embarrass yourself. Oh, no, he was very quick at opening the door for us. You've raised him very well. Luca will defeat many enemies and he will take many wives. You have glorious son. Congratulations, puny man thing. He reaches back and slaps his chest. That is the hope. He is growing to a fine man. Or husbands. Whichever. Nail does not judge. 
Take many of them, though. Life is short. Luca, aren't, aren't Luca's this, face uh, has turned red at this point. Well, if you wouldn't mind, we're going home for the night. Yeah, so they try safe. to walk past you. I hear it's quite dangerous here at night. Yes, but that's why you're here, right? Exactly, to do the job that others couldn't. Good night, sleep tight. Don't let the burning headless horseman bite. It'll make a beautiful nursery rhyme after, I'm sure. As he opens the door and walks into the house. And now we wait. You see everybody is putting out the lights inside their... Oh. All, all the fires going uh, get put out. All the uh, chimneys that have been smoking uh, stop. Everything goes quiet. The sun has set. Darkness has fallen. It's quiet. It's too quiet. You can hear some movement in the house, houses nearby, but it seems like everybody's trying to be quiet. Some time passes, and down the mountain near the base, you hear a, lo- a, a very loud whinny echo through the night. What was that? I'm going to kill it. I don't know. We will. You, you can see down the mountain, just looking down the slope, uh, light illuminating near the gate. This might be our uh, our cue, boys. That's our ghost. Get Should behind I go me. ahead and uh, cast mm-hmm. Warding Bond on myself? Yeah, go ahead. I say we should bring the fight to him. Just real quick, I'm just really curious on how Warding Bond works on yourself. Yeah, a wound creature you touch. I am willing. <laughs> yeah. Between you and the target. Mm-hmm. Uh, was specified, no, you can't cast the spell on yourself because it requires two creature, each wearing a platinum ring. Okay. It's also resistant to all damage, Suwaki. So I'm going to put this on... Uh... Oh, okay, there you go. Who uh... else has a platinum ring? What are you playing as now? Nail is barbarian. All right, so I'll put this on the squishy guy, the bard. Oh, thank you, sir. Mm-hmm. Oop, right on the shoulder. All right. Okay, what do you all wish to do? Get it! <laughs> all right, you begin making your way down the road, down the mountain, and you hear a loud crack at the base, you can only assume it has broken the gate. He broke the damn gate. Mapping my way down south, walking fast as people passing them homebound. That was a dead end, guys. Dead. Oh no! <laughs> we are running faster. It's coming in hot. Protect Gale. Run more quickly, Ar. Now! Don't go in front of you- Nail! All right, there you go. Right there, you all see the creature. It is a specter, the body of a man atop a flaming horse. The horse is black in color, but its mane, hooves, and tail made of fire, burning bright, illuminating around it. man atop is wearing armor, has a red cape, flowing down the back and you can verify what Gale said uh, he is headless he's headless how does he even see you have grabbed its attention and it begins to rush toward you and you hear it draw its sword out and that will right here and the shield I just got uh, actually hang on one second I'm just going to make sure Kraden get this. behind me I pull out my crossbow I stand on the bridge and yell, You shall not pass! Grab you all. And then hit start combat. So, I have my crossbow out. Okay. Like, Don't worry, guys. I got this. And with my light crossbow, I just shoot it. Your bolt flies off, missing the horseman. All right, guys, I don't got this. <laughs> um... Let's see what he does when he gets closer. I'm done. 
Um, and then I just take it a step back for my last bit turn, and boom. <clears throat> All right. This might wake up the villagers. But, uh, wake them up. Sh- I'm going to throw a shatter at them. Go ahead and throw it out. All right. Both him and his steed. Okay. So the nightmare fails, taking the full seven damage. And the horseman does succeed and takes four damage. Right up here. And uh, that's it for me. The horseman rides atop his mount and approaches you. The steed. That actually ends uh, warding bond. He's too far away from me now. Oh. No. The warding bond <laughs> has ended <laughs> as he ran too far away from you. The nightmare approaches, uh, rears up, and kicks at Creighton. You see it coming, and you barely dodge out of the way. It lands back onto its hooves, and the horseman swings with his sword twice at you. You evade the first, but the second does hit, dealing 11 damage to you. And that will end its turn. All right. Yeah. Nail runs forward, raging. Right. Swing once. Nice. Uh, what are you attacking? I'm attacking Nightmare. Okay. And the horseman gets in the way of your attack. So you hit the horseman, dealing... 18 damage. And I will use my extra attack to hit him again. You do hit. Dealing 8 more damage. And that will end my turn. Okay. If I fire my breath weapon, will Nail have to make a dex saving throw as well? Anything in the way. Okay, so I'm just going to end it there and just get closer to the fray. All right, Brody. I'm gonna squeeze on in. I feel uh, I messed up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my crossbow. And I'm gonna put it away. And I'm gonna bring out my great axe. <laughs> All right. So you swap weapons. Yes. That it for you? I will rock out my breath weapon. Yeah, you're close enough. Yeah. Uh. Let's use my breath weapon. Uh, so so you roll 2d6. Oh, wait. Uh, at level, no, you're level 5 still. So 2d6. Roll for it. And you fire cold, right? Yes. All right. Make a con save. Woo! Okay. The nightmare does save, taking half, so three damage. And the horseman takes the full six, or er, five. All right, Brody, is that it for you? Um, yes, that is it for me. Thank you. All right, Creighton. Got this, Creighton. I'm going to, uh, you know, since he's right in front of me, I'm just going to swing at him with my rapier. At the nightmare or the horseman? At the horseman. Okay. I want to see if this guy is real or not. You slash the horseman. Dealing eight damage. Oh, stab him. Uh, and then as a bonus action, I want to uh, kind of tap my <clears throat> rapier on my shield, create a little a little B, and then spire nail. Give okay. My bardic inspiration die. All right, nail. You have one of his bardic inspiration die. Don't forget to use it. All Thank right. You, the horseman turns, facing. The biggest opponent at him. But at Nail, he raises his other hand, well, other hand, and you see a jack-o'-lantern appear atop his head, and the jack-o'-lantern is radiating fire all around it. And he throws it at Nail. I will react by using my Bardic Inspiration dice to add to my AC. Damn it! (laughs) My AC is 18. Uh, but it's just bludgeoning and fire, so you take nine damage because you're raging, but you need to make a con save. 
You are stunned as it slams into your face. I will use a lucky dice to roll Wait, a... Real quick. Okay, so... So he rolled a 10. <laughs> yeah, so he rolled a 10. Uh, which plus... 19. I'm remembering his modifiers. He rolls it plus would... 7. So actually that means that the bardic die would have gotten you just at 7. Oh, wait. It I still have hits 18 then. AC. You have 18? I just said yeah. 17. Shield. Oh, wait, you have 16. Oh, uh, yeah, you have a shield now. Yeah. Edit that. There you go. Yeah, so you block the jack-o'-lantern then. Nice. Yay! Yeah, you... the, the nice, nightmare buddy. Nice. kicks at Nail. As the jack-o'-lantern flies toward your face, you block it with your shield. The nightmare rears up and kicks at Nail. Kicking against his shield, it slams into his own face, causing six damage. And then the horseman just rides on past you. Wait, do we get opportunity attacks if he rides past? Oh, all right. I guess not. Just ride and just walks past Dracon, just sprinting by. Not actually sprinting, but I think it's 60 feet of movement. What the yes. hell was that? Uh, I see. I have 40 feet. Um, I can throw my hand axe at him, right? I mean... Is a hand was... axe thrown? Yeah. Let's, okay. let's say you could throw the hand axe. I throw my hand axe at him. <laughs> it flies off somewhere over here. You hear it clank on the ground. Hit a small child. Thank you for not throwing it at the house. Dracon, as you were running toward the horseman, he ran toward you, past you, and now you've turned around. 15, 20, 25. 30. I'm going to go ahead and um, just start striking at him. Uh, let's see. Both hit. And I'm going to go ahead and apply um, Divine Smite to both of them. Go ahead. Uh, and burn those spell slots. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and just roll the 2d8s. And um, oh, 15. I was going to can I, am I able to use Misty Step as a bonus action after using those Divine Smites? Yeah. Okay, then I'm going to go ahead and use my Misty Step to... Damn, I shouldn't have cast that Ward and Bond. I'm going to go ahead and Misty Step in front of him. Let's see, five. I'm going to try to get ahead of him. And I will end my turn on that note. Oh... I ain't done with you yet. And then I sprint. All right, you take the dash action. The horseman turns his torso to watch you run around. Hey, stop it. I can't really do anything, but now I'm right here. <laughs> Ends my turn. All right, Graydon. All right, uh, so I'll run my full speed. 25, 30, get to the edge of this bridge uh, and then just make sure that the distance doesn't hurt anyone else. Alright, I'm going to upcast Sleep as a level 3 spell. Okay. So, what, that's 47 health points it can cover over? If I remember. That's what it looks like. Yeah. I will say, you may want to say if that both of them are over 47 health points still. Okay, well then my spell fails, and uh, yeah, so uh, as a bonus action, I will once again inspire Nail. All right, Nail, you're feeling inspired as Creighton cheers for you from behind. Yeah, Nail. Yeah, yeah. You can feel the pump. Come with me if you want to lift. Is that it for you, Creighton? Yeah. All right, and the horseman begins riding by, passing Brody. He slashes at him with his longsword. Not to do Brody, roll me a d6. You slash at his sword as he attacks you, and you actually cut across his arm, dealing two damage to the horseman. 
He retaliates back and slashes at you once again, but you dodge out of the way very nimbly. But he continues to ride on. As the Nightmare and the Headless Horseman approach Drakon, they see that he's in their way. And the horse kicks off the ground and takes flight. Is he so high that I can't slash him? Uh, you also don't get opportunity tax with him. Oh, okay. You say he just take, he take flight? He flies? Yes, the horse can fly. What the freak? What the... So you can all see above you, no longer on the ground, the horseman is in the air, about 30 feet up at the moment. Well, no, 30, the 30 feet up at the moment. They died. The people are all dead. Hey, I got 100 gold out of this. So I mean, like... Nail. <laughs> I will we save them all. <laughs> <laughs> For the and they will dash. Back here, so another 15. Nail is coming! That will end it for Nail. As you calm down, you you begin loosening uh, your pump. Uh, You're gone. I'm trying to see where I can position myself to use my breath weapon. Well, he's 30 feet up, so I think you'd have to be directly under him. If I recall, yours is 30 feet. It is, yeah. Nail, I'll make up for this. I'm sorry. I'm going to go ahead and fire <laughs> off my breath weapon. No! Wait. No, no, he's 30 feet up, so you would have to be directly under him to go up 30 feet. Oh, okay. Um, if you remember how angles work, that would be way further. No, it's just hard to tell which way is like up and down. I'm going to dash 30, 35, 40, scooch by nail. I think it's a bonus action. Um, let me see. Abjur enemy, no, that's an action. Is it Vow of Enmity? That's a bonus action. Um, yes, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, um, cast Vow of Enmity against the horseman. I will say he is outside of 10 feet of you. So he's not within the range of it. Because he's above you by 30 feet. Okay, fair. You see why I hit Aarakroka? Okay, yeah, now I now I do, yeah. All right, Brody. You bringing that crossbow back out? <laughs> Completely switch out my weapons for my... Uh, we'll say you never crossbow. drew your other weapon. Go ahead and just fire the crossbow. Okay. Can I see him from where I'm at? Yes. And he's within range to fire normally. Are you firing at him or the horse? At him. All right, it hits. Uh, um, uh, 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 am I able to shoot another for an, uh, as an extra attack? Yes, I'll be fine. Boom! One. It hits. You deal one <laughs> damage, and that ends my turn. Um, <clears throat> I put the crossbow down though, just in case I need a quick switch to my weapon. It's my hand right. held, always ready. All right, Graydon. Dashing through this. There. Yeah, you do. What's up, buddy? What's up, man? Yeah. Uh, this guy's a real pain in the butt. Uh, as I pop up next to Brody, I'm going to pat him on the back and inspire him. Okay, Brody, you have the inspiration die now. Uh, can I only have one at a time? Oh, yeah, both Nail and Brody have the inspiration dies. Yay! However many you have left, I don't know. I have one left. Makes sense. All right. He's rolling dice, guys, and we don't Jesus. know why. Spirit. And everybody dies. The horseman continues to fly. So far. He has seemed to lose his care of you all completely. And has disregarded you. <laughs> the guy's house that we're supposed to be protecting is up there. Lord Tyrant. Yeah, keep running, keep running. Tyren, not Tyrant, thank you. I Tyren. I uh, and he's uh, still hovering about 30 feet above. Okay, that's what I figured. 30 feet above, yeah. But he's at least above. I'm up here in this area with him, though. <laughs> yeah. And that ends Nail's turn. Yeah. Come on, come on, come down. Fight me. 
Fight me! The horseman look well, moves his body and faces you, looking down from the horse. Ah! And I dash. You all seem to be doing that a lot. We all have to be chasing after. Funny is, the god same spot that we just left. We went all the way down here to fight him when he was coming up to us. I can't even see Brody. <laughs> the stream does not see Brody at all. He's so uh, far away. <laughs> all right, and then the dash movement as well. And that's where I'm at. Okay. And then I think it's my turn. Yeah, I'm going to dash up there as well. 15, 20, 25, 30. That's 30. And then we're dashing right in front of Brody here. Uh, and then I'm going to sing encouraging words to Drakon and use my last uh, bardic inspiration die on him. What kind of... Uh... Words do you sing to him? What kind Dashing of through the town to kill a headless Sorry, man, man. bad guy. We will all fight together and save everyone in town. So as Craden tries to <laughs> sing out, as, before the words really even, he hums a little bit, and then Nail starts singing. Who's the Martin in this group? <laughs> hey, man, that was beautiful. beautiful. D6? D8. D8. I mean, not and right this now. Is... Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Just for, for those that didn't read it last time, could you post uh, your inspiration die in the chat? Yeah. Oh, wow, it's back to the horseman already. When all we can do is dash, it kind of happens. <laughs> the horseman <laughs> flies over and looks over at this house. You see him raise his hand up into the air and summon another jack-o'-lantern. He throws it down onto the small house. The jack-o'-lantern explodes into fire. He's now hovering about 60 feet in the air. Right here. And ends his turn. No, oh, 50 feet in the air, to be exact. Um, so he's still within 50 range. 50 feet in the air? Yes. Would I be able to throw a javelin? Yeah, javelins are thrown. Okay, 30, 120. Okay. So is it disadvantage at 120 then? Yes, above 30 to 120 is a disadvantage. Okay. Then let me throw this at disadvantage then. Just throwing yeah. all of my weapons at him pretty much. All right. Um, it I'm not going to use a lucky miss. dice for that. Okay, it does miss. It just flies yeah. off into the distance and I will, you hear I will a clank it. down the mountain hopefully it didn't hit anyone let's see so he's 60 feet in the air uh 50 feet 50 okay so the breath weapon's not gonna do it um is just the it looks like this building's made out of like hay or something is that right Strong. uh the the main structure is uh stone but the mm -hmm. roof yes is, is wood and and straw um is there a way uh, i can can i hear screaming and... from inside the building i'm gonna go ahead and uh can i kick down the door yeah you can kick down the door i'm gonna go ahead and do that and try to rescue anyone inside who may be who may not be harmed get the hell out of here is she surrounded she, by fire is she so you you enter into the building the roof above you is on fire it hasn't actually come down into the establishment yet but just above you is the fire. As you're waving to yourself from her, she's looking at the fire and looking at you. Come on, run. What are you looking at? I'm going to hold my hand out, but I'm not going to get any closer. I'm not going to go within the house. She runs to you uh, and out the door with you. Get the hell out of here. Come with me if you want to live. Run. Go far. Don't look back. She begins to run to go down the mountain. And um, I'm not exactly sure how much movement I have left. I want to go up to the front. Um, if I have the avail or the movement speed for it, I want to go ahead and knock on uh, Lord Tyrant's door, try to get him to get the hell out of there too. Or at okay. least warn him. 
Yeah, you can you can run over the there. Door, that's it. Yeah. So you want to move over there? Okay. Yeah. There and you go. bang on the door. Yep. Uh, and you hear uh, shouting from inside. What's going on? Hide. I just tell him to hide. Run. Hide. Me. I'm inside the house. Well, then you are poorly prepared for danger. All right. I will grab my daughter and and go into the back rooms. Brody. Pull out, pull out the crossbow. And I fire! Zero damage. How does it do zero damage? Uh, you rolled a nat one, and you have a negative one modifier. That's fair. Uh, uh, I can do better. Reload real Pop quick. So bad. Uh, you realize you uh, loaded in a bolt that actually didn't have a tip at it. That makes sense. That's that's why I, that those garbage shots. Hiya! Oh. Even better, dude. <laughs> it misses. <laughs> you actually fire it into the fire. Jesus. I put the crossbow down, and that ends my turn. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Graydon. Four, five, six. Get just in front of Brody. 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 Fancy. I guess I don't have a lot of options here. Um, let's see if this will work. I'm going to try hypnotic pattering it. No, it's, is there any just floating up there? Let's just give him a vicious mockery. Yeah, let's see. At the horseman? Yeah. At the horseman. Got him out. That hits. Mm. You deal for a psychic. What do you say to the horseman? You were so ugly, she took your head off. So she wouldn't have to see you. He would see tears if he had a face. Good one! Alright, does that end your turn, Graydon? That's it for me. The horseman turns... Well, the horse and the horseman turn around to face the other direction. And Just throw jack-o'-lantern at Lord Tyron's house. And it's... The two-story building, so it's uh, it has ignited the roof. Nail. How long is the hempen rope in my pack? 60 50. feet or something? I think it's 50 feet. Would it be enough to throw it up, fashion a lasso out of it, throw it up, and try and yank him off of the horse? Like, yank him down towards me, basically. Just the headless horseman himself. Because I don't want to do it to Nightmare, because if it hits Nightmare, he's liable to burn the rope. But if I hit the actual Headless Horseman himself, I want to pull him down with all of my strength. Say you fasten it into a lasso and throw it, roll me a ranged attack with a ranged attack weapon. Okay, I'll just roll it with so my... So like a javelin. Javelin, yeah. Well, let's roll it with a hand axe. Why not? At disadvantage. Even with disadvantage, it still <laughs> hits. You lasso the horseman's arm and roll me a would it be athletics an athletics and he will contest with his strength all right i did not mean uh, to put that at not an advantage but we'll take the first 22 one. you pull him off of nightmare he oh. falls and hits the ground yeah Taking 21 bludgeoning damage. Jesus! <laughs> oh my god, that's huge. He was missing his pump. He does not lift enough. Come on! And that is really all that I can do. So I'll go ahead and end my turn there. Yeah. Come on! Dracon, you see um, night the nightmare floating in the air still without a rider. I'm going to go ahead and break the door down. I want to... Uh, try to ensure that the lord is safe and escort him out you look into the manor and th the room is empty you see doors to your right and left stairs leading up to the second floor uh, but you don't see him i'm gonna call out for him lord tyron lord tyron reveal yourself you hear off in the distance uh, muffled what is it your house is on fire. Let's get the hell out. In case you didn't know. The roof. 
The roof is on fire. <laughs> we ain't got no water. Let them go burn. All right. Let's go, guy. Let's go. <laughs> See Lord Tyron walk out of his house. To the mines with your daughter. <laughs> with his daughter. Let's get the hell away from here. All right. So do you end your turn? Um, no. I want to go ahead and push up a little bit, and I'm going to fire my breath weapon. He's been waiting all game for that. <laughs> yes, uh, yes. Is it uh, a I... line, or is it a cone? It is a line, and we are shooting lightning out of my face. All right. Roll me 2d6. Shocking. He takes the full damage. That's my action, so that's my turn. I see him flump on the ground, just flop. And as I see that, I grab my my uh my great axe and I start walking over and I swing it once at him. It hits. I swing it again at him. He dodges the second attack. Dang, it's so much more damage too. <laughs> Right? All right. Uh, action surge. Did you have a bard dice? Is it still in effect? Uh, it doesn't it just affect the damage? Oh, yeah. Damage roll. You could use it on the damage to oh, add an so extra D8 of damage. A, that's the... What I post is in addition to the normal um, bard, okay. bard inspiration dice, so let me post that as well. So I just roll a D8 to see if it adds... Yeah, you just, I mean, it's a D8, so it'll add a 1 no matter what. So you could use it and make that attack hit. I'm going to whop in 4. It hits. That's 16. All right, and that was... So then I, I'm, that, that was my second attack, right? Correct. Okay, yes. then, so then my, my action surge, since I used it, um... Do you two more great, attacks? Yeah, another great axe. That hits. And then another great axe. <laughs> the headless horseman is retreating back from all of the attacks. And then I say, What? You done already? And then, but that ends my turn. But he doesn't know that. All right. <laughs> Big dog on campus. And then I'm going to breath weapon at him as well. Mine is also a line. Go ahead. There it is. So 2d6. Roll it. I just did like 30 something damage. Gone. 40 damage. It's impressive. So he takes 3 damage from it. Sounds, sounds good. Thank um, God we got those people out of that house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Breath weapon back. coming in through the front door. That <laughs> uh, I will use as a bonus action healing word. At level two on myself at 11. So back up to 42. Yeah, full health. And I am done. Nightmare flies down the 50 feet. The horseman jumps on to Nightmare. Damn it. Get back down here. 50 feet of movement, though. I will say night Nightmare has 90 feet of flight. Gosh. God damn it. The horseman looks or well, faces at Craden and Nail. You notice, but he's not looking at facing either of you. It seems like he's looking between you. Him and Nightmare fly up 40 feet above you. He creates a jack-o'-lantern in his hand and throws it at Lord Tyron, which hits. He is knocked down onto the ground, stunned. Let's see, so 40 feet. Can I do yes, it again? And... He never slipped my lasso. My lasso is still on that headless horseman. I never took it off or anything like that. I just looped it over him and pulled him down. So would I be able to pull him down again? Because he didn't do anything to slip the lasso. We'll say as he fell. I mean, you pulled. Yeah, we'll say it's still attached. Okay. Um, so can would I be able to pull, try and pull him off again? Yeah. Right. Roll me an athletics at normal. This is apparently my job now. 
All right, let's do it. But don't decide right away just in case I roll too low. So don't tell me what the result is. Up oh, 19, I'll go with it. All right. Itai is resisting it. Well, that's the end of my turn. <laughs> um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, hit Lord Tyron with about... Are you going to try... You could try and grab my rope and pull him off. I holding on to a lasso would that be an the bad guy. Yes. Okay. Um, I want to protect our employer here, so I'm going to go ahead and donate about 15 HP of lay on hands to him. So bring me down to about 10. Okay. You heal Lord Tyron. And uh, so would I? Actually, no, never mind. That wasn't so that's your action, laying on your hands? No, that wasn't my question. Um, that'll actually be my turn, so. Brody, the horseman is flying 40 feet above you. Lord Tyron is on the ground, stunned and hurt. But you see Dracon knelt down, healing him. I've run over to, to Nail and I grab that rope and I, I give it a tug. All right, roll me an athletics check. Nice roll. <sighs> Not nice enough. He pulls against. Uh, it was my turn. I tried. Maybe we should try together next time. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, Graydon, you're options. casting Shatter up at the Horseman in Nightmare. Exactly. And both fail. Nightmare. Looking worse for wear, as well as the horseman looks to be on his last legs. I don't know if I could chop him off. Pull him down, guys. We've been trying. The horseman, seeing the rope attached to his arm, puts it against night, burning the rope. They fly over and land on the ground. The horseman sees Lord Tyron laying on the ground. He gets off of Nightmare, walks up, turns his sword over. Don't do it, and then Jacob. So stabs you. down at Lord Tyron with his sword. Oh, Joseph, not Jacob. Don't do it, Joseph. No. He stabs once into Lord Tyron's stomach. You hear him cough blood out. Lord Tyron falls over, his head resting on the ground. He can be saved, but he is mortally wounded. The horseman on Nightmare begins to ride off with the remainder of its movement. 100 feet. <laughs> He's on the ground. That's too far from me. And ends its turn. One thing to consider, if you kill his mount first, he can't fly. I'm just going to skip my turn. You remain there. No. Come Hunter. to the side Draco. of Lord Tyron. And I am going to hit him with... Uh, I think Cure Wounds is the only thing I got. We'll do that at level one. It's not the most effective thing, but something. So could I add my Bardic uh, Inspiration die to this Cure Wounds? Give him a little bit more HP? I did not mean to have uh, the Mind Smite and Dueling Style check. Okay, you're good. Uh, I'll allow it. Yeah, just roll the d8. Alright, let me go ahead and check out. So you're feeling extra inspired in saving Lord Tyron. You're radiating holy energy. Boosting. I will make sure your father lives, girl. As she is sobbing. You heal him for 16. His eyes open. He begins coughing viciously. My lord, save your strength. You can hear the fire crackling on the roof above you. We must get out of the way. We wouldn't want any debris to fall on us. Would it be like an action to like pick him up and move him out of the way? Uh, I will say you're ground. strong enough to lift Lord Tyron. Okay. And we're just going to shift over to the side a little bit. That way we can get out of the way of the burning building. His daughter follows. And my turn now. Brody, snipe him. I don't have it equipped. I have my battle axe. 
Yeah, he br- he brought the axe out. Or your axe. Throw okay. the axe. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, uh, however, I will go right here, and I will end my turn. Right. Great. Huh? You see the, the horseman riding up the road, but the lord is back alive, so... Yep. He's gonna get a vicious mockery. At the horseman? At the horseman. Only cowards run. Oh, did not mean to do that advantage. Let me reroll that. He saves against it. The horseman turns around, begins to ride back. He rides past Brody and Craden, the back of Dracon, and slashes at him twice. He remains on the ground. Oh, not anymore. Wait, slashes at me? Yes. Okay. Oh, yeah. I, can, sh- I can work with that. Dealing 21 slashing damage, and then the second hitting team, so 37 slashing damage. <gasps> Nightmare so kicks oh. at you. Not at advantage, stop it. We'll take the first damage. Damn it. Dealing 17 damage to Dracon. Dropping him oh, very God. low, but he still holds on to the Lord. You can take that as him being a holy paladin or the actual Lord that he's holding on to, one or the other. <laughs> Nail. He's going to step forward and raise. Yow! Let's go ahead and... Are you slashing at the horseman? Yes. You run up to protect your own and slash at the horseman twice. You feel your scimitar cut across him, dealing 16 damage. The horseman goes limp on Nightmare. And that will end my turn. Dracon, you are holding Lord Tyron in your arms. Yes. Uh, you can feel blood rushing down your back. Um, so now that the uh, creature, now that uh, Nightmare is in front of me, I'll go ahead and use my bonus action to hit him with... Uh, oh, no, I didn't mean to do that one. Uh, Vow of Enmity, actually. Um, okay. I think that means you get advantage on attack rolls toward him, right? Yeah, for a minute. Okay. And then what are you going to do? I am going to... You're holding attack. the Lord in your arms. I'm going to attack Nightmare. I'm going to... So you're going to just shut drop the Lord? I'm going to go ahead and free him, let him go. Yeah. And, okay. Uh, so you make, make your attacks at Nightmare. And I will make those two slashy slashes. One, two. Nice. Both hit. And I will go ahead and apply a Divine Smite to the first one. Does that mean I get an extra D8 if it crits? Uh, for... yeah. So roll 3D8. For my final spell slot. Nice! Oh Oh my god. (laughs) Yeah! 24. Hot damn! That was a nat 20. Cut down the nightmare. Max damage. I cut the head off of the beast. The horse falls to the ground on its side. You see its rider fall next to it. I drop to a knee with my sword in the ground. Weary. Bloodied. Heck yeah! Get get that little dragon! Come on! At At the two creatures lying in front of you, the horseman rolls up and puts his hand onto Nightmare. I'm sorry, come again? You see Nightmare beginning to fade. The horseman points at Lord Tyron and then reaches for the spot where his head would be as the two fade away. What was that? I may not be a smart dragon, but that looked pretty personal. Yeah, Lord, I think you have some explaining to do. I think I know who that was. one hit point left. Talk. He doesn't even hit that hard. I don't know how you got so hurt. The the Lord stands up, brushes himself off. Thank you all for dealing with him. Here's your gold. And leaves the large sack of coin on the ground and begins to walk off with his daughter. 
Oh no, 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 Lord. You you didn't t you knew exactly what that was and you didn't tell us. And that's dishonor. I am going to take the gold and turn him around. <laughs> God damn it, Neil. <laughs> I grab the gold. Light crossbow. I'll Dragon, shoot you. what are you doing? You owe us answers. I owed you gold, and that was it. You You've set us paid, up to die. And you did handsomely in dealing with the problem. I don't think he's dead. Very well. You saw him disappear right then and there. I think we are done here. Things that we can't leave bodies. He shoves your hand off his shoulder and begins to walk on the road. Okay. If he does that, I attack him. You attack the Lord? I do. <laughs> attack you him begin to attack him. He starts <laughs> yelling loudly. Just under, he dodges out of the way of your rapier. I'm being assaulted by the mercenaries. They are trying to steal the rest of my wealth. You see the people of their house begin walking out of their houses. Call the authorities immediately. Captain! This man is a liar and a murderer. You see Luca and Captain Williams rush down. I think it's, I think it's time for you all to leave now. Do not touch the Lord. I was going. Captain, do you take your orders from a murderer? What do you mean? I think the Lord here knows exactly what that thing was and why it's been attacking, especially his home. Have you had anybody beheaded lately? No, no one of the sort. The Lord faces the captain and then faces you. And what proof do you have? The thing that kills every the thing that kills everybody in your village doesn't like that man. It's, it's, it's very specifically pointed at him. You. I think that was quite obvious. He didn't like this town. No, he slew just one this of guy. Guards and attacked the house right there that you actually were not able to protect. That is what you were hired for, correct? That's what we're hired for. But there is a code of honor here. Captain Williams, have you been able to find any remains of Joseph? No, but what does that have to do with anything? Ask the Lord, Silva, if, if he'll give you the truth. Or bring Gail and ask her what she knows. I know what you're talking about. Joseph and I are friends, and it is tragic to see that he is gone. He went out with a hunting expedition with two other of our village who have not returned. So thank you for bringing up another tragedy that we have faced. How long ago? Do not bother Gail with your accusations and stir up her emotions even further. Already mourning her dead fiance. You men have no honor, do you? All right. And thank you for protecting lead. my home from that creature. Captain, summon the guards. Put out the fires. I hope he returns. Don't but call us first, if he does. Escort these Neanderthals out of our town. You're a Neanderthal. Nail his dragon. Smart I'm going to I'm... <laughs> I'm gonna run over to Gail's house. I'm knocking on her door real quick. As you knock on the door, no one answers. You on, open man. the door, and this is just a shed. <laughs> Good point. Good point. You realize uh, that you never actually knew if this was her house. I'm going to write uh, on the door, Lord Tyron killed Joseph, and then walk away. <laughs> just dropping tooth palms and walking away. Just like, poof, mic drop. All right. You are escorted out of Langston by the guards who watch you leave and set up watch around the e entrance. The gate is broken, but they station there. You leave and make your way back to, or at home with the thoughts in your minds on whether or not you've done the right thing. But you did indeed defeat the Headless Horseman. But is there more mystery? Bom, bom, bom. I'll burn this whole village to the ground. There's no mystery. I know exactly what happened. Bom, bom, bom. All right. 
And that will end our session. Thank everyone for watching. Listen. And come back next week for another episode. Hopefully, if everyone's schedule works out, we will play another session, hopefully back to the reawakening. Hopefully, I miss that spot. Hopefully. Yeah. But hopefully. again, thank you all for watching. Adventure on. <laughs> thank you for joining the Dungeon Bros and the Banshee's Whale. Have a great, great rest of your night. Thank you, everyone. Until next time. Everybody. Bye, guys.